everyone. It's Lori here at the Land of Color, and I just wanted to share something that happened with one of my consultations today because I thought it was interesting. Um, the graphic that you see up on the screen, I actually found on a paint brand's website uh, not too long ago. Well, actually, now that I'm looking at it, um, it says bear right here. <laughs> so it was the bear color blog where I found this. And um, I thought it was a great infographic, and the blog post that went with it was actually really good. I was, like, so happy to see Bear speaking to their color palette in terms of hue family. They even categorized their grays correctly into hue families. And this infographic that went with that blog post is just um, a little preview of that. They were talking about um, neutrals and in this case, we have grays from the orange, purple, blue, and green hue families illustrated here. And I thought um, this would be a good, good, um, good picture for you, a good image for you to look at in terms of what I'm going to tell you about what happened in my consultation. Um, it was about grays from this orange hue family is was the issue today. So I had a client email me. She is looking for a color for her office in her home. The office is off the main hallway, set of French doors to enter the office from the hallway. There's another set of French doors on the back wall that goes to the backyard. That's the only window door situation in that room, uh, only situation for natural light. So uh, in her email, she said, all of the grays that, um, you know, she's bringing home. She said, all of the grays are turning purple. Gray, you know, I want a gray, but I can't have a gray because they're all turning purple in my house. And I said, hold on a second. <laughs> you know, what grays have you tried that are turning purple? Well, as it turns out, she, um, from the Benjamin Moore preview deck, she had tried a la mode and elephant gray. Uh, a lighter one and a darker one because she didn't know if she wanted light or dark. So she was trying um, a range of light and dark, medium toned, darker, uh, near neutrals for her office. And they all turned purple. So as soon as she told me that it was all a mode, that she tried an elephant gray and that they turned purple, I knew exactly what was going on. So I looked up the other colors. She tried six. She had six samples. So I looked up the Hue family for all the other colors. And sure enough, they all belong to the orange Hue family. So I told her, I said, your problem isn't that every gray is turning gray. You know, there's something weird about your room that makes all these paint colors of gray turn purple. The problem is you're attracted to warm grays from the orange hue family and because of the quality of light you have to work with they're shifting purple and so then we got into the whole undertone conversation about purple undertone this and purple undertone that and what she didn't and it's not about undertones undertones are about density um, undertones don't even apply to architectural coatings because you have to manipulate the paint film to reveal an undertone and we don't do that in architectural coatings. So I explained to her that, you know, she needed to think about dif color differently than the whole undertone thing because that was not helping her out, right? Um, because she was confused how, you know, the question was, well, how can these colors belong to the orange hue family and look purple? Well, the fact that they belong to the orange hue family, um, doesn't change because it happens to look purple in a certain quality of light. What determines the hue family for a color is its color DNA, right? So it's based on spectral data. And that's why I always say if you change the color, if you change the light, you change the color. But the color's DNA stays the same. And that explains why some people can try elephant gray in their space and it looks just like a warm gray. And why other people, I think I just hit the microphone, sorry, <laughs> bad noise. And why some other people will try elephant gray in a la mode and it looks purple in their space. But the fact that it belongs to the orange hue family doesn't change. But what that gives us is a benchmark. Now we know where to go and what to do next. So I told her the colors of gray that you've been attracted to in that chip rack 
you can't you can't have those in your space because they're going to turn purple. So the solution is we need to go a little bit more clockwise, more into the yellow hue family and try some um, near neutrals from that hue family to try to get her that that um, gray look that she's looking for. And if you use my color strategist color wheel, which um, I know a lot of you do because it's been downloaded tens of thousands of times at this point, which just absolutely blows me away, but it's free. So you can download it as many times as you want or need to. But um, in Camp Chroma, I teach you how to use a color wheel, um, not just my color wheel, but all color wheels and why it's so important to be able to categorize color by hue family. And so when you use that knowledge with this color tool, you're able to make predictions and, um, you know, strategies. You're able to use strategy to uh, get to the perfect pink color that you're looking for. So now we know that she can't use colors like a la mode and elephant gray. Uh, in her space, we need to shift and go more into the yellow Q family. And um, I explained to her, you know, it's like she had a fan deck too. And I said, if you look in the front of the color preview fan deck, you can see how Benjamin Moore categorizes their colors by hue. And the color chip range from 2009 to 2109 is categorized as brown by Benjamin Moore. And that correlates with what I was telling her <laughs> that these colors belong to the orange hue family because brown is really just dark orange. So it all clicked together and it all tied in together. And by the end of the conversation, she totally got it and she understood that it wasn't about undertones and you know what was happening and undertones don't apply to architectural color. She got that message. And she also understood the difference between color shift and color overtones, that this wasn't a case of overtones either, right? These colors were shifting based on the quality of light that she has to work with in her space. And it's entirely possible that elephant gray uh, is going to look just gray in someone else's house. So um, that's why it's important to have a consistent benchmark of hue family. So um, you don't drive yourself crazy trying to guess uh, about what's going on with a color. You know what's going on with a color. And you're able to analyze those qualities and partner the right color with the quality of light that you have to work with that way. Um, you know, so it's not some kind of chaotic, you know, willy nilly. Well, you know, the undertone's purple in this situation, but it could sure shift and look pink in another situation, or it might look blue. No, right. It always belongs to the orange hue family. If it shifts, then that tells us about the quality of light that we have to work with. From that point, we can make, um, cogent color strategies, intelligent color strategies to proceed to find the right color. And that's how you get it done. And that's how you get it done quickly. And my boys and my dogs just got home. So I'm going to let you guys go and we're going to go to dinner. So I hope this helped. I hope you found it uh, valuable and useful. I'll talk to you guys later.